Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss the proper etiquette to adhere to when it falls to you to introduce other people. It's a fact of life that most of us operate within a number of different social circles. For example, many of us will socialize with family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, and so on. And often, these social circles are largely kept separate. Not necessarily intentionally, of course, but simply by way of the fact that they wouldn't have much reason to naturally come together or commingle in most circumstances. Still, there are situations where those different social spheres will come together. Parties, weddings, funerals, and so on. And in those situations, given that you may be the person that knows both people from different circles, it'll be your responsibility to introduce those people to one another. Hence, we've created today's guide on how to approach the exercise of introductions with class and tact as befits a gentleman. This is part of our larger series on etiquette, and you can find that by checking out the playlist here. First, though, let's answer the general question, why is it important that introductions be made between people in the first place? The simplest answer is that by introducing people at a gathering who don't know each other, everyone will generally feel more at ease in the social situation, and people will be able to converse more comfortably. Phrased another way, the purpose of introducing people is to give them an opportunity to get to know each other. And here's an added benefit. By performing a proper introduction, the introduced parties will reflect on you positively and see you as a socially adept individual. Never a bad thing. Alright, with the central why out of the way, let's get into the specifics of our techniques, starting with what to do before an introduction happens. Yes, there are a few pre-intro considerations that you may have. Firstly, it's important to find a proper opening and to get your timing right. After all, you don't want to embarrass yourself by accidentally introducing the wrong people to each other or by interrupting a flowing or serious conversation with an introduction. For example, if your boss is in the middle of a business discussion at an event, butting in to introduce them to a friend will seem out of place and improper. Now that we've got the question of timing down, we can get to the real meat and potatoes of today's video, the actual etiquette conventions of formal introductions. The basic protocol of formal introductions calls for introducing a lesser ranking person to a higher ranking person. These rankings are generally determined by things like age, job title, or how long you've personally known one of the individuals in question. The higher ranking individual's name should always come first in an introduction. So then, here are the four steps to a formal introduction. First, state the name of the person being introduced to. In other words, state the name of the higher ranking individual. Second, say something like, I would like to introduce, or please meet, or a similar phrase. Third, state the name of the person being introduced. In other words, this is the name of the lower-ranking individual. Fourth, mention one or two small details to get the conversation between the two individuals started. Don't give away too much so that they don't have anything to talk about, but just get a detail out there so things can get flowing. Now, let's put all of that together with a few examples. You may, for instance, be introducing an older person to a younger person. You could say something like, Grandma, this is my friend Will. He and I just completed a project together in chemistry. You could be introducing a senior professional to a junior professional. Something like, Mr. President, this is our new data analyst, Ms. Johnson. Or you could be introducing a host to a guest. Something like, Mrs. Adams, this is my daughter, Janet. She just returned from a ski trip in Colorado. Getting the picture here? You may notice that in the second example, we left out an additional anecdote. In that case, the job title of data analyst serves as the detail that the senior official could latch onto. Also, often in business introductions, providing other personal details isn't usually necessary. So you may then be wondering, 
What if the two people I'm introducing to one another are of equal status? Well, in this case, it's purely up to you which person's name you want to list first. It's that easy. And if you are performing an introduction between one person and a group of multiple people, follow the same ranking system we outlined before, but just make sure to list the names of each person in the group individually. That way, no one will feel minimized or left out. Here's an example of that one in action. Director Miller, I would like to introduce our engineering team. This is Tom White, Amy Nakamura, and Kendall Thompson. All three of them participated in our conference on Wednesday. Simple enough, right? Before we move on to some more general guidelines, here's a quick note on less formal introductions, because of course they do occur as well. If you're in a more casual situation, a full formal introduction isn't always necessary or even practical. Still, you should generally try to follow the overall guidelines of introducing the higher ranking person to the lower ranking person. Let's say, for example, that you're a few rows apart in the stands at a basketball game. Obviously, it's not going to be practical to do a handshake or really have a conversation at that point in time, but a smile, a friendly wave, and just exchanging names should be enough. Then, if you find yourselves in a situation where you can have a more full conversation later, take the opportunity to do so. On that note then, let's broaden our discussion out again and talk about body language and social cues. Look at the person you are speaking to first, then turn to the other person as you complete the introduction. You should make an effort to make eye contact with both individuals that are part of the introduction. Speak clearly, of course, and don't mumble. Mumbling is just going to reflect poorly on you as the person conducting the introduction. As we've already mentioned, use courteous language. May I introduce, or I'd like you to meet, are good examples of a lead-in for an introduction. May I present is going to be your most formal option. In more formal situations, or when there's an obvious age difference between parties, using courtesy titles and last names is going to be more polite than just using first names. After all, once they get talking, the people you're introducing can make the decision to use first names themselves. And even when you are using first names, try to include last names as well. Not only is it more polite, but it also aids in memory retention for those people being introduced. Also, teach children to use the titles of adults rather than simply their first names, unless an adult specifically requests that only their first name be used. For example, something like, Mrs. Rosen, this is my niece Kayla. Kayla, this is Mrs. Rosen. This brings up a good point about repetition, though. Only when introducing children to adults should you reverse and repeat the introduction, as in, X this is Y, Y this is X. Otherwise, reversing and repeating can make the introduction seem a little tedious. In order to make sure that everyone remembers everyone else's names, just use names organically as the conversation continues. And finally here, let's cover what to do if you find yourself having forgotten someone's name in the middle of an introduction. After all, it does happen. The best course of action is simply to politely excuse yourself and say, I'm sorry, would you please remind me of your name? And if you find yourself repeatedly blanking on someone's name, you can be a little bit sneaky. Take the two people and simply say, have the two of you met? Then you can sort of prompt the two people to say their names for one another. This is a little bit risky, however, and it won't always work, so it's a tactic that's best avoided. In general, honesty is the best policy. And there you have it. Those are the etiquette guidelines for introducing others. Before we go, though, here's what to do if you find yourself being introduced to someone else. First, stand and face the person in question. This makes it easier to maintain eye contact and shake hands, and presents you as equals in the introduction. If a person is unable to stand, of course, just politely lean to their level. Don't forget to smile, give a firm but not crushing handshake, and let go promptly. 
There are few things more awkward than somebody who hangs on too long after a handshake. And finally, after the introduction has been completed, give a pleasant greeting to the person to whom you've been introduced. I'm very pleased to meet you is an easy choice. And one final base to cover here, introducing yourself to others. If you know the person's name and title, it's best to use it. Something like, Mr. Jones, my name is Michael Wilson. It's a pleasure to meet you. And if you'd like to introduce yourself, but you don't know the person's name, you can just lead with yours. Something like, hi, I'm Preston Schleter. I thought I'd like to get to know you. As with before, don't forget the smile, eye contact, and firm handshake. In conclusion then, knowing all of these rules, all types of introductions should be a breeze for you. You'll look good to the people whom you're introducing, and they should hopefully be able to start up a conversation with little to no effort. We'd like to know, do you already use any of these introduction techniques? And do you have any more that we might have missed in today's video? Whatever the case may be, share with us in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Gentleman's Gazette channel and hit the little bell icon so these videos will come straight to your inbox. In today's video, I'm wearing a business casual outfit that would probably be appropriate at a great number of different kinds of social gatherings. The central piece, of course, is a cotton linen blend sport coat of blue-gray with a window pane pattern in beige and brown. I'm wearing it over a French cuffed shirt from Charles Tirrett. The shirt is white and it has a check pattern of blue and green. Both the shirt and the jacket have check patterns, but because they're at varying densities, they don't look too much the same and thus can harmonize together. The vintage tie in green features a small repeating geometric pattern in gray and brown and thus harmonizes with the other colors in the outfit. Also, the pocket square is in dark green, so it harmonizes with both the tie and some of the colors in the shirt. My cufflinks today are from Fort Belvedere, and they're platinum-plated sterling silver links in an eagle claw design that feature malachite as the stone. The green tone, of course, is found elsewhere in the outfit. My plain charcoal trousers serve to ground the outfit a bit, and they're accented by socks that are also from Fort Belvedere. They're in dark blue, and they have a shadow stripe of gray. And the outfit is rounded out with my newer dark oxblood penny loafers. <laughs>